Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, the plant I'm waving at you here is a Tredescantia. It's a pink variety. I've seen it with loads of different names, and I can't say for sure that I've got to the bottom of it, but I've got a little bit of information on it. And the problem with mine is not the bit that you can see. So if I just kind of move along up here, it changes. You can see we've got crispy leaves there, we've got marks on it, we've got brown bits, crunchy bits, not very nice bits. And what I'm going to do today is we're going to have a look at this closely, have a little chat about it, and I'm going to tell you why I think it's doing this and what my plan of action is to correct things. And then maybe in a month's time, we can actually see some improvements. So let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so what we have here, um, you'll find that it comes under loads of different names on the internet. And I can't really say that I've found like a definitive answer to this anywhere. If anybody knows of any resource that gives you all these different hybrids, then I would love to see it. Um, I think the best we can do is come up with things that look very similar and the names that are very similar and just really kind of draw on the species. So the species is actually called Tredescantia cerinthoides and it's from Brazil and Argentina areas. The synonym or one of the synonyms is Blosfeldiana, which apparently is quite an old one. Not many people use that now, but you'll see it online as Tredescantia lilac, nanuk, nanuk lilac, fluminensis nanuk lilac, bubblegum and various other kind of synonyms. So as far as I can see, these are either all the same plants or they're all based on the actual species, which is Tredescantia cerinthoides. Okay, I'll try and stick that up on screen, just say it to remind myself so that you can look it up. But if we base it on the species, then we know we're going to get the care conditions roughly right, even if there are one or two differences depending on the hybrid, the particular hybrid. The problem is there are so many, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hybrids for Tredescantia, and they're so easily hybridised that it just appears to me anyway that there is no definitive resource on it. I'm sure they must be registered somewhere, but I don't know where that is, and I don't know if we, as a... Uh, a growing public can get access to that. Um, so anyway, this is my plant that I've had since, and I'll just have a look because it may well tell me on the label, as it usually does. So it was a cutting from 22nd of April 2020, and you can see I was sold it to Stradiscantia fluminensis nanuk lilac. So I'll get that out of the way. And you can see that there are some really nice parts to it. Um, I'm just knocking the camera over there, in particular the end bits, so the new bits are looking the nicest, but n you don't have to go very far up the stem before you start getting uh, parts of it that are looking anything but nice. And there are reasons for this, which I think I know. So, I mean, yeah, it's not it's not looking great. It has, it has bloomed there. You know, and incidentally, if you do get yours to bloom, any Tredescanti to bloom, they, they bloom successionally from the same point. So don't cut it off straight away. So I've got like this inflorescence here, this kind of blooming stem off to the side. And when one of the blooms is over, they only last a few days, when it's over, don't cut it off, leave it, because they keep coming. So you can see the old ones there, and I think, they're this, I think there's a couple of new ones still left there. Uh, but well... I'm going to cut it off just because of what I'm going to do to it. So what are the issues with this particular plant? It's looking dreadful at the moment and I'm quite sure you've got one at home that looks better than mine. Um, and I'll tell you why. So these are known as a particularly tricky Tredescantia uh, for various reasons. And one of the reasons is that they are very, very prone to water damage on their leaves. They're also very prone to sun damage on their leaves, root rot in the pot. They, it seems like it's a really awkward plant to grow. However, you may have one in your house that looks absolutely stunning. And the reasons for this are very similar to the reasons that I think Miltoniopsis don't grow in my greenhouse particularly well. 
So let's think about what the difference is. Well, what do you get in a house that you don't get in a greenhouse or vice versa? What do you get in a greenhouse that you don't get in a house? Well, humidity is the, is the main one, isn't it? Most houses are very dry, lacking in humidity. And seeing as it's the humidity and water splash that causes all these leaf marks, then that's something that I can definitely, well, <laughs> It's not something that I, I can improve without actually sticking it into the house, but I can make some effort to try and lower the humidity. So because my greenhouse is full of all these different plants that need the humidity, the best thing I can do is move it to a spot which is away from the fogger. The fogger is in the warm side of the greenhouse. In the summer, it doesn't really matter. Warm, cool, they're both similar, but I can move it in front of a fan not right close up to the fan, I don't want to cause any, any wind burn on there, but I can clearly move it somewhere where it's going to be well ventilated. Usually in the summer we get lower humidity, not always, that's just fudge in the background there, back in its shadow. Usually we get lower humidity and that's just something that, you know, we, we don't know whether it's going to come or whether it's not going to come. So the best thing I can do is just to put it in front of a, a fan um, or at least within reach of a breeze. So that might help. So that's my first plan of action. Uh, the second point is the water damage through splashing. So obviously to avoid water damage through watering, through splashing it, I've just got to be careful, haven't I? At the moment it's in a very small pot which we can remedy and that will help. I have it hung up, I quite like it hung up, it's that kind of a trailing plant. So by hanging it up in a slightly larger pot, hopefully I should be able to avoid the, any damage from the water splashing. But that's not really what's causing these crispy leaves. So the next point is that it's in a very small pot. Now, if you see this kind of Trediscanti, this is quite a thick stemmed one. You can see these branches, stems, are really, really thick compared to some of the other Trediscanti. You can also see some nice new growth coming from underneath there. But you can see it looks very, very compact. I'm going to unpot it in a minute and confirm that. I'm quite sure it's very compact. And I put it in a larger pot, and that's the same, that's true of all sorts of Trediscanti. If you do uh, grow them in a small pot, as you do as a cutting, and they kind of take off, eventually you'll find that the vigor reduces. And that's true of many plants, isn't it? If it's in too small a pot. So I'm gonna get it in a bigger pot. That's going to help with things and hopefully that will prevent some of these lower down leaves from crisping up, at least initially. So my second plan of action is to get it into a bigger pot. The third plan of action is to move it away from the sun. So that's going to be done along with moving it in front of a fan. So if I can get it away from the sun, when I have it at the moment, even though it's shaded, it's actually on the sunnier side of the greenhouse. So I'm gonna move it away a little bit, probably behind the partition wall, so it's in a reasonably shady place, or as shady as I can get it. It's still got full light, it's still getting loads of light, but it's shaded as in it's not in that direct line of the sun. So that might help as well. So that's three things to do. And the final thing I'm going to do is to take some of these tips, I'll have a closer look at them, definitely this tip, and I'm going to replant it in the pot. So I'm gonna take some cuttings from it. I've already done that once or twice already, but as you can see, the pot's so squished full. It's not really doing what I want it to do. It's just not looking particularly good. As I say, I'm sure if you've got one in the house, you've got it in a bigger pot, in a better place, out of the sun, it's neglect, isn't it? I've totally neglected it. I need to do something about it. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, I'm gonna come in from the side here. Hope you can see what's going on. So first thing to do is to take this hanging basket chain off it. Easier said than done. There's one. I'm trying to keep an eye on the camera as well to make sure that it's in line of sight. That's one of my usual tips. So I'll get that out of the way and let's unpot it. Now these are also prone to root rot in the pot. Now it's not something, an issue that I have with it because I always make sure it's well dry. So you can see how compact that is. That's definitely in need of a repot, isn't it? Um, we have got some nice new growth coming from the bottom there. Um, it's another one there that's just sprouting up. So it's not really going to be that bothered if I cut some of these back and start them again. So the first thing to do is to cut some of these off. So I'm going to cut this one 
Um, let's see, so we need it. I don't really need that to be too long. I'll just cut it there, just above a leaf node, and I'll deal with that a bit coming off there. I'll deal with this cutting in a little while. So I'll just move that to one side. I'm gonna do the same with this longer one over here. Again, just above a leaf node, I'll deal with the flowering bit in a while. So that's two. What else can we get? Um, let's get, we'll get this one as well. This one perhaps be a little bit smaller. So I'm not really worried that it won't root. As I say, to the scantier, they will root in anything. They're so good at rooting. Um, they're not really, um, they're not really fussed what you put them in. And people seem to be really keen to root these things in water. And yeah, it will work in water, but why go and give yourself a little bit more work to do? Why not just stick it straight in a pot? Because it's going to root. I've, I've yet to have a failed Tredescantia cutting. I'm sure it'll happen now that I've said it. Do I remove these scruffy leaves? Well, see that one's even lost its growing tip. Probably through a little bit of rot there. Now that one has as well, we'll cut that off. I'm not gonna cut every single leaf off here. That's growing tips gone there. By cutting these back as well, we're encouraging these lower down ones. That's gonna go. Um, so this is the one where we, what we want to grow. And there's another one there, there's another one down there and another one there. So really, let's see. I'm not really liking this particular growth here. I'm gonna cut all that off. Um, that's looking a bit nicer. Give us a little bit more room. I don't really like that one. That could go. I'm going to get rid of that one. I mean, could I use that as a cutting? Probably, but it's not, it's not really, it's not going to grow in tip for a start, which is going to make it a little bit slower than the others. So no, I don't think I will. Um, that's got a growing tip on it. So I think we might do that one as well. And there's another one, if you can see, just coming next to it. So if I cut that, that will give some vigor to this other growing tip coming out there. So yeah, I've butchered it, but don't worry about it. It will come back. We will see in a few weeks time. So that's what we're left with at the moment. So that's gonna be repotted. All those are going to be prepared into some cuttings. So what I need to do now is find a pot of a decent size, which is easier said than done, but I'm sure I've got one hanging around somewhere. I'll have to clean it up because no doubt it's filthy because I'm hopeless at cleaning these things out. And I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, one pot, slightly larger. And we've got some holes in the side already for the hanging chain so I can hang it up. I was better to do that before, as I remind myself very frequently. Now, I would prefer to put some kind of drainage in that just covers the holes, like uh, stones or some sort, sort of crocs or something like that, but unfortunately, um, I don't have any. <laughs> and also, they would be likely to take up too much of the pot because it's quite a shallow pot. It's not the ideal size for what I want, so I am going to use some moss just to cover the holes. Not a great deal, just a little bit at the bottom. Um, I don't want to make like the whole mix completely uh, mossy and soggy. I want it to be well drained. As we've mentioned before that the roots are prone to rotting, but I will obviously make sure that it all dries out for a while before I then go and water it again. So the mix that I've got here, the media, this is actually uh, a peat, it has got peat in it, it's a multi-purpose compost mixed with coir, mixed with perlite. Now the reason I've got that is because I'm bulking it out with the coir, I'm trying to move over to coir, but I've still got a bag of proper multi-purpose compost, which is peat based, I've still got a bag of it left, so I'm gonna to have to use it. So I've just kind of got into the habit of using half of that along with some coir to bulk it out a bit and of course some perlite as well to give me some extra aeration in there. So that should be perfectly okay for Tredescantia. So we'll pot it up now and hopefully there will be some room around the sides for my cuttings when I've prepared them. So because it's a shallow pot there's really not a great deal of space at the bottom so I can't really add anything underneath there. It's just going to sit right on the moss. It may well be that I find another pot for this, a bigger one if I can 
get some time to do that. I've got pots dotted about all over the place, all in need of washing, all ready for washing. It's one of those jobs I hate doing and I never get around to it. It's like, it seems like almost the minute that you've washed them all, um, you, you've created another load ready for washing again. Okay, not a great deal to that. It's because of the way the pot is, because it kind of drops down there. I'm off camera again, aren't I? Because it, because it goes narrower underneath, it's really easy to create like loads of spaces underneath. And you think you've filled them all and you really haven't. Well, let's fill that up. Okay, I mean, th this will be enough for it to be getting on with and it'll be enough for it to expand a little bit and for these cuttings to take off and hopefully uh, when it does become a nicer plant i'll be able to <clears throat> put it into a bigger pot so that cut is looking reasonable so obviously what we want to do the the roots come from all the nodes so wherever a leaf would have joined the stem that's where your new roots are going to come from same on all chedoscantia so i've got to cut below just below a leaf node uh, which looks like about the so it's just below that leaf there and there is a, a node there I mean normally this would really matter with Tredescantia it hardly matters because it will root what, like I say regardless whatever you do you don't have to do anything else to it pop it in make sure it's covering at least one of these nodes um, I might be able to get it down to that one there that third one up um, and then that will definitely start to, to root. I'm not going to remove any of these lower leaves. It'll be absolutely fine as it is there. Like I say, I've never known any plant root as much as this. And this is why it's invasive. <laughs> it's invasive in a lot of countries. It's on the banned weed list. But the loss is our gain. Is that right? The gain is our loss. No, the loss is our gain. Same with this. So... We have a cut above a leaf node there, so if I just cut just below that one, I don't know if you can see that there, I'm going to strip that on because we don't want the leaves underneath the, the soil because obviously they are going to rot off, that one's dead anyway. I'm going to pop that one in at the side there, make sure it's pressed down enough, I and mean, it's already looking better, <laughs> might just be my imagination. So I'm going to cut the flowers off. I don't want it to put any energy into flowering. So I'll cut that stem off. Again, I'm going to cut just below a leaf node. I'm going to remove that flower leaf. Um, I'm going to leave that one in. Find a gap for it. And we'll pop it in there. And I think we have one more. There we are. Same thing, that's already cut just below a leaf node. Move them bottom ones, and perhaps we can be able to stick that one in up right there like that. Okay, simple as that. So I'm gonna put the chain on it now, and I will hang it up and show you its new position out of the direct sun and in line of the fan. Okay, so there it is in its new position. So I'll just show you in relation to where it was before. So it was over here before, and you can see there, the sun comes through that roof there. Um, so even though it was kind of in like underneath the shading, it was like on the hotter side. Um, and I've got now got it over here, and this is where we've got the partition there. So it's a little bit more out of the sun there. And it's also in direct line of this very powerful fan down here. So hopefully that will solve any issues with the uh, leaves, you know, catching any kind of humidity and so on. Now, of course, that depends on the weather as well. If we get a lot of rain over the summer months, which may well happen. Um, I've also put the date on the label so I know when I've done it. So I've got the nice new bits now and hopefully they will all start to sprout and overtake the horrible bits on the plant. Now, of course, people very often say to me, um, why don't you just grow it in the house? And they've said that to me with the Miltoniopsis. And the thing is, that isn't the point of the channel. You know, I have my own reasons for not wanting to grow these plants in the house. I want to grow them in the greenhouse and I want to do everything I can to try and 
create those conditions that's the, that's the whole point that's the idea behind it of course i could take them into the house i could go and take multoniopsis in the house stick it on the windowsill and i'm sure i'd have no trouble because the temperatures would be absolutely perfect and you wouldn't get those wild fluctuations in humidity in temperature in sunlight and so on and so forth um, but i don't want to do, try and do that i want to do it in the greenhouse that's really uh, that's the challenge for me that's what i'm after trying to do so anyway it's there there it is i hope you might have got something from that and the real proof of the pudding of course will be in a few weeks time when we come back to it and we do a part two to this video and hopefully i'll be showing you a much nicer plant summer anyway it tends to be lower in humidity not always but at the moment it is anyway although we have got rain forecast for the rest of the week so let's see what happens. So give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, by all means, stick in the comments anything that you've got to say on the matter. I love to hear from people. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.